Hey everyone, it's Lexi. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the top five books that I read this spring. I actually ended up reading a lot of books. I was averaging about like five books a month. And so this was actually pretty good considering it was like the last few months of my last semester as an undergraduate. So I ended up reading still a lot despite being very swamped with projects and like papers and all that and exams. I only had like one exam, which was kind of freaky, but Oh well, I'm not complaining. So like how this video is going to be organized, I'm going to go through all the books that I ended up reading for each month and their rating and then I'll go back and share with you the top five books that I've read over spring and I'll kind of go into more detail why I enjoyed it so much. So without further ado, let's get started. In March, I read The Dark Witch by Nora Roberts, which I gave four out of five stars. I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak, which I gave two stars. Harvest by Ted Skerritsen, which I gave a five out of five stars. Brooklyn by Colm Toy Toybin, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Agent Carter Declassified Season 1, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. So moving on to April, I first read The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The Winter People by Jennifer McManon, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Shadow Spell by Nora Roberts, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And Blood Magic by Noir Roberts, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. So moving on to May, I first read Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. A Court of Mist of Fury by Sarah J. Mass, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Alone by Lisa Gardner, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. And Flight of the Sparrow by Amy Belding Brown, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. So starting out of all those books I read, so like the starting out within like the top 5, I first, like in no particular order, but the first one would have to be the Agent Carter Season 1 Declassified. This book I had on my wish list for a while and I ended up getting it um, towards the end of last year. And it's basically a behind the scenes of like the Asian Carter TV show and um, it's really well done like it's pretty expensive but it's well worth the money like it has very good high quality pictures and it just kind of goes behind the scenes of how the TV show came about and just like a kind of like a step-by-step -step of each TV like episode so that was just really interesting and then the author knew a lot and just the picture quality in here is just really good it's worth the price that you pay, I will say. Like, it is on the pricey end, but it was well worth every dollar. It was just really interesting, and I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait for the se season two to come out. I'm a little disappointed, though, that it got canceled, but hopefully, you know, it'll get picked up by Netflix later in a couple years. I don't know, because it left on a cliffhanger, but either way, like, if you're a fan of the TV show, then I highly recommend that you check this out. Even if you can get it from the library, it's just well worth, like, it's just well worth reading, and it was just really interesting. So kind of the next kind of in, within the top five was I also include the series in here because I just really enjoyed it and it was the Cousins of Dyer trilogy by Nora Roberts so it was Dark Witch, Shadow Spell, and Blood Magic and this basically it's like about like it takes like kind of a dual storyline that eventually kind of the times kind of overlap so basically it's in the 1200s and there is a sorceress named Scorsha and she is known as the Dark Witch and she is very powerful and there's this other guy named Car Caravan who is kind of like a bad wizard and he wants to get her powers so she sacrifices herself she gives her powers to her children and she sacrifices herself to kill this bad wizard but she ends up not killing him fully so kind of his spirit still kind of hangs around so flash forward to the present day there is a cousin named Iona who lives in the U.S. and she ends up coming over to Ireland to meet her cousins um, Brianna and Connor and they end up becoming the circle and so it's their kind of uh, I guess destiny to kind of kill this dark lord like dark power so it's kind of them kind of working together and kind of killing him once and for all and it was just really interesting I really liked it it's more of like an adult version of Harry Potter I will say because I still got kind of a lot of vibes from it but I really enjoyed it throughout the whole series and I think the third one was probably my favorite just because it focused on the two main characters that I like the most so yeah if you're looking for kind of like an adult fantasy series and I highly recommend that you check this out 
So this next one is kind of like a medical thriller, psychological one that I read. And Tess Gerritsen is probably one of my all-time like favorite authors. She did the Rizzoli Isles series and then there hasn't been a book of hers that I have not liked. And this one was Harvest and it's about a girl named Abby. So she is a resident and she gets like recruited to join this kind of transplant team with her boyfriend. But she ends up kind of figuring out that there is kind of like this black market and something is not right so this um society ends up going after her and they kind of frame her it was just interesting like it was so suspenseful I don't want to give too much away because I feel like I don't know it kind of ruin it for you but basically like there's the black market for organs and she's kind of uncovering this and she ends up getting framed and so this was her kind of proving what's going on. It was just so good. Like, if you are looking for, like, a medical thriller or, like, a suspense novel, I checked this out. It was a 5 out of 5 stars. So good. I think this was, like, her first, like, medical thriller science-y suspense um, book. Because I think she started writing out romance. And then this was her first kind of within, like, the medical thrillers thing. And she's a doctor, too. So the terminology and kind of, like, the hospital atmosphere was pretty spot on. So, like, if you're looking for something like this, highly check this out. It was just amazing. The fourth book that I have within my top five is Stolen Songbird. And this is a book that I heard a lot about. I actually purchased this before a lot of people started talking about it. So I heard great things, so I decided why not to go ahead. And this is about a girl named Cecile. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And she ends up getting kidnapped by trolls. And these trolls are not really what we see in Harry Potter where they're dumb and slow and all this stuff. They're, like, smart and conniving and all this stuff. So she ends up kind of getting thrown into this troll world that's very political and there's kind of like the half-bloods versus the purebreds and just kind of like racial I guess you could say <laughs> issues there so she ends up kind of being fighting for him she ends up finding like all these other things and she ends up falling in love and this was really good I'm on the second book right now and it's really good I really like it she's a very strong female character and she, it doesn't really follow a lot of the YA tropes that we typically see so if you're looking for like a kind of a fantasy that's a little different then I highly recommend that you check this out it was so good so last but certainly not least, this book, if I'm being honest, I was very hesitant about continuing on. I had a lot of issues with the first book in the series, and I'll, I think I have a review of it somewhere. If not, it'll probably be in my wrap-up, and I'll probably link it down below. But this is the second book in the installment, and I was very happy that I decided to continue on with it despite my negative feelings towards it and it is A Court of Mist of Fury by Sarah J Maas and this was just like I don't even think you can compare the first book and the second book like they're completely different like so much character development and world building and just kind of like I think in terms of like character issues that I had I feel like they were done specifically in terms of getting like the character growth and development um I'll leave kind of like my full review of it down like in the bottom bar so if you want to know more about it but if you are hesitant about going on with this series I highly recommend that you do it was well worth kind of like the horrible first book and there was just tremendous character growth and development and it put me in a book hangover I will definitely say that so um if you haven't like if I haven't persuaded you enough then I highly recommend that you still check it out it was just really good so yeah so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about some of these books and what were your favorite books that you read this spring. So yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!